In this video, we're talking about how to find the volume of a right circular cylinder. And let's talk about what we mean by right circular cylinder. We start with a cylinder, this shape here, this three-dimensional shape or object, and we're talking about a right circular cylinder. Circular means that the top and bottom, or the base and the top of the cylinder are circular, they're circles, and right circular means that there are right angles between the base and the top and the sides of the cylinder. So right angles are 90 degree angles, so that's a right circular cylinder, and when we have that particular object and we want to find its volume, we use this formula here. Volume is equal to B times H, where B is the area of the base and H is the height. And if we think about the area of the base, we're just talking about the area of the circular base or the area of a circle. So we could, instead of B, use a substitution pi r squared because pi r squared is the area of a circle. So we can use either formula depending on what information we've been given. And we're just going to do a couple examples here. In the first one, we know that the radius of the circular base is 5 units, that the height of the cylinder is 4 units, and we need to find volume. So if we go ahead and put this information onto our cylinder to label it, what we know here is that the radius is 5 and the height of the cylinder is 4 and we need to find volume. So if we want to find volume we're just going to use this formula here. We've been given radius and height so we'll go ahead and use this pi r squared h. So we're going to get volume is equal to pi times r squared. r is 5 so we're going to get 5 squared times the height and the height is 4. So when we simplify here we'll get volume is equal to 5 squared is 25, 25 times 4 is 100, so we're going to get volume is 100 pi. We'll go ahead and leave our answer in terms of pi, but if you're asked to give a decimal approximation, you just want to plug 3.14 in for pi. If you want to give a fractional approximation, you could use 22 sevenths for pi, but we're going to go ahead and again leave it exact, so we'll say that volume is 100 pi. In this example here, we've been given the radius and the volume, and we need to find height. So if we go ahead and label the cylinder with this information, the radius in this case would be 2, the volume would be 12 pi, so volume is equal to 12 pi, and we need to find height. Well again, we'll just go ahead and use this volume formula with pi r squared h, since we've been given r, so we'll go ahead and say volume is 12 pi, so we'll get 12 pi is equal to pi r squared h. So pi times r squared, we know that r is 2, so we're going to get times 2 squared times h, which is the unknown value in this particular problem. So then we're going to get 12 pi is equal to 2 squared is 4, so we're going to get 4 pi h. If we want to solve for h, we divide both sides by 4 pi, and we're going to get h is equal to 12 pi over 4 pi. We're going to get pi to cancel from the numerator and denominator, leaving us with just height or h is equal to 12 over 4, which is going to be, of course, 3. So the height then of this cylinder has to be 3 if the radius is 2 and the volume is 12 pi. So we'll go ahead and say here 100 pi, and we'll go ahead and say height is equal to 3. In this last example here, we have height is equal to 6, volume is 54 pi, and we need to find the radius. So if we go ahead and label our cylinder again, we know that the height is 6, we know that the volume is 54 pi, and the radius is unknown. If we plug these known values into our volume formula, we can say volume, or 54 pi, is going to be equal to pi r squared h. Well, we have pi, we don't know the radius, so we'll leave r squared, but we know that the height is 6, so we'll go ahead and plug in 6 for h. If we want to solve for r, we can divide both sides by 6 pi, so we'll divide both sides by 6 pi. On the right hand side, we'll get pi to cancel with pi and 6 to cancel with 6, leaving us with just r squared. On the left over here, we're going to get pi to cancel with pi. 54 divided by 6 is 9, so what we end up with is 9 is equal to r squared. If we take the square root of both sides, we're going to end up with r is equal to 3. Technically, we'd end up with r is equal to positive or negative 3 since we're taking a square root. But of course, the radius can't be a negative value. We're talking about a distance in actual real space. So the radius can't possibly be negative, which means we can assume the positive value for r. So if the volume is 54 pi and the height is 6 units, then the radius has to be 3 units. And we can go ahead and say radius is equal to 3.